Whether you're a new viewer or a longtime viewer, there's something I want to share with you, and that is my craft room is a mess. Let's go. Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. On this channel, I love bringing you ways to organize, declutter, do DIYs, upcycles, and anything crafty. But I gotta be honest with you, keeping on top of my craft room is just as problematic for me as it is for you. And I'm always trying new systems, which is why I get to bring you so many ideas. I used to have a craft room that I loved. It was floating in the middle of a garage. It was made with bookcases that surrounded an area that was right around 11 by 10 feet. But all of the walls were made out of bookcases, which meant storage was plenty. And I also had the rest of the garage to utilize for the overflow items. Last summer, I moved in with my husband and we tried to combine households. Now, I love being inside. It's so much nicer being able to just walk into my craft room, not have to go through the rain. I don't have to deal with it being freezing in here or super hot in the summer. So there are a lot of advantages. Some of the disadvantages are, one is this was his childhood home. His mom bought this house originally back in 1953. And she had a little bit of a collecting tendency. Uh, I don't want to use any harsh terms, but she had a lot. And when he moved into it after he grew up and she passed away, there were 50 years worth of items that had been collected in this home and he needed to move in. So it all got shoved in the garage. The garage is still something that needs a lot of work. Things that he put in there when he moved into the home, all of his mom's things. So these are items that we're slowly going through. The room I'm currently in was his prior processing room where he had things that he was selling, things that he was going through, paperwork, basically anything he didn't know what to do with got put in this room. So we took all of the things that were in here and shoved it on top of what it was already into the garage. So the space in here is limited because there were large furniture items that were undecided as to whether to keep, sell, and the items out in the garage really can't be moved yet. So I know if you've ever struggled with trying to blend households or if you've had a family member pass away and you don't know what to do with their items, you completely know what I'm going through right now. But I want to share where I'm at in the room because as I am coming up against these hurdles or I'm processing things, I want you to be able to see what I do, how I go about the process and just come along on the journey with me. So here's what we've got right now. Currently, I have my old desk set up, although it's much smaller, and I have the three bookcases that were always my backdrop. The rest of the space is really in flux because, as I said, there's furniture we can't take out. So this is the area that I'm trying to make work. Right now, this little area is where we've got things that my husband's currently selling on eBay. The top shelf are my projects in progress, but you can see there's an enormous mess in the corner. That's a file cabinet that he has with old documents as well as old computers that he needs to discard. And do you see in the back there's a little closet? Yes, that's a closet filled with memory things and childhood things from when he was young that we just absolutely have to go through. And I put this in because if you've ever thought, gosh, why can't I just get to it? This is me literally staring at the space trying to figure out what to do. Do I pull all the stuff out of the closet and try and make homes for it? Or do I just leave it for now and let the rolling cart move out of the way? But it's difficult to decide. So for now, we're leaving it. I can always move the rolling shelf out of the way, but the top shelf, as I said, are the things that I'm currently working on. I have little hanging baskets on the second shelf where I can just put the little need to get to items, but I can lift these baskets up because they're on S hooks. And I have smaller items behind that, smaller blanks. I have my chop couture things behind there. So it's easy enough for me to just remove the S hook get access to that, but not have it look so messy. And then the bottom shelf, as I said, are all of the things that we're currently selling on eBay, which is a lot. So it's overwhelming in this space. 
In the corner, I have my light kits. I have my wrapping papers, contact papers, things that I use frequently. And I have a plant to try and kind of hide it. On my bookshelves, I like having decor out. So you'll always see that I have a lot of decor pieces. That's because that's what makes me happy. I did move the paints from when I initially made that paint organizer. I moved it over and I also moved this little tension rod up to hold all of my ribbons. And having them rest on a tension rod for me makes so much more sense because I don't have to deal with moving the whole rod every time I add or remove ribbon. I also keep my little heat dryer gun out at all times because that way I can use it as well as my little brush cleaner. Now down at the bottom I have boxes of items that are complete zones. So I have full projects that are in progress, new things, but the top shelves are filled with decor like this box that Sherry over at the Posh Paper Lady made for me during our collab. I have the jars with all of my smalls, of course the DIY glue gun that we made together. I love having that out. So these are the things that I use, but I also have inspiration pieces around. And then I have my extra new things, my glue gun supplies. I have all of my tapes and adhesives in a box. And of course, my scrapbook organizer. Now down here, I had shown you a cover for these power strips. I'm gonna be making that soon. In the bottom corner over here are my Christmas projects and the unattractive things that I use all of the time. I think it's okay to have some clutter when it's items we frequently use. For me, my glitters, my glues, my solvents, my rub-ons and stickers, my markers, my little wood pieces, those are all things that I'm always grabbing. Now this corner, this is just for pretty except for my pegboard. These are my most used tools and pens and I always have those at my fingertips. My workstation is cluttered right now because I don't have active drawers. So I have so many small things that I grab when I'm working, whether it's post-it notes, highlighters, markers. I have correction tape because as I'm writing out a script, oftentimes I'll change my mind. And I'm old school, so I do things with paper. So this might be messy, but it's working for me. Across from me is the dresser area that you got to see last week with the tension rod organizer. And that cannot come out of this room. I don't have a place to put it. And next to that is the bookcase that we made out of those drawers. So this little space is small right now and all of the rest of my items are currently being stored in a garage and I miss them. I didn't realize just how lucky I was with my setup until I had to leave half of it behind and I tried making this a functioning workspace. So again, I wanted you to see what this looks like because if you're ever feeling bad about your space, just know we work with what we have, it's evolving all of the time, and I'm gonna be applying my own tips and suggestions as I'm going through this. I'm working at it little bits at a time, I'm pulling out one box every week or so, going through it with my husband and helping him make decisions, because as I said, these were things that were left over from his mom and she has sadly been gone for a long time. They're memory items that he has had since he was a child, and even though he hasn't touched them in years, as soon as he sees it, he feels that hug of nausea to keep it. So I'll be going through some of those things with you. I might even be able to talk him into going on camera with us as I help him make these decisions. But I wanted you to see what my workspace is this week. And I think today is the last day for my Audible deal. So right now they are doing 90 days free. Now, there are two links. One is in the middle of the page. For some reason, that one's not working. Don't use it. Use the link that is up at the top for the 90 days free. Free. If you choose to keep it, it is $7.95 a month, but it ends today. So if you're interested in getting Audible for three months free, click that and use that code. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you to my patrons who allow me to make these videos, and I will see you guys next week with a new video. Bye.